Namaskar viewers, hello and welcome to Sunset TV. I am Tina Jha, you're watching Perspective. In this edition of our program, we will be talking about autism with a focus on awareness, acceptance and advocacy for the needs of individuals with autism as well as their families. The month of April is significant globally for this cause. While the 2nd of April is observed as World Autism Awareness Day, the whole month of April is now being celebrated as Autism Awareness and Acceptance Month in different parts of the world. The goal is to help improve the quality of life of those with autism. According to the World Health Organization, autism, also referred to as Autism Spectrum Disorder, constitutes a diverse group of conditions related to development of the brain. Characteristics may be detected in early childhood, but autism is often not diagnosed until much later. Globally, one in 100 children has autism. The United Nations says the rate of autism in all regions of the world is high, largely because of lack of understanding, which has a tremendous impact on the individuals, their families, and also the communities. And therefore, it is very important for societies worldwide to learn more about autism, to improve early diagnosis, to learn more about the experiences of autistic people, and most importantly, to build more welcoming and inclusive communities to support people with autism. So what steps are being taken to make the society more inclusive and sensitive to the needs of those with autism? What are the concerns and challenges of individuals with autism and their families? What causes autism? How to diagnose it? What should parents do if their child is diagnosed with autism? These are some of the aspects that we will be talking about on the show today with three esteemed guests joining us on the program. So let me first introduce them to you. I have with me uh, Mr. Sundar Rajan, President, Autism Society of India. Dr. Imran Nurani, Chief Psychologist, Center for Developmental and Behavioral Pediatrics, Institute of Child Health, Sir Gangaram Hospital, New Delhi. And Mr. Navneet Sharma, he's a parent of a child with autism. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining me on this edition of the program on Sunset TV. Uh, Dr. Nurani, let me, in fact, begin the program today with you. The World Health Organization numbers say one in 100 children has autism globally. Now, if we begin by understanding first, what causes autism? Yeah, uh, Tina, we don't have any conclusive studies or any medical markers or biomarkers for autism as of now. It is considered to be a crosstalk of thousands of genes plus some environmental concerns and conditions that come together and result in autism spectrum disorder. There are associated comorbid conditions with autism, which can be uh, diagnosed through imaging or other uh, medical or blood evaluations. But per se, till now for autism spectrum disorder, there is no medical marker or a medical diagnosis which can be done through blood testing or imaging uh, these facilities. How autism spectrum disorder is diagnosed is through a batteries of psychological tests or developmental evaluations, which involve a lot of questionnaires, clinical evaluation by a developmental pediatrician and a psychologist, plus a team of other rehabilitation and allied professionals. The reason why uh, we don't have any short-term interventions or clear-cut goals for uh, clear-cut medical interventions for autism as of now is because of this lacuna that we don't have any uh, medical tests to diagnose autism spectrum disorder. And perhaps that's is, why the United Nations says that it is the lack of understanding leading to late diagnosis, which is uh, causing, you know, uh, uh, autism in several people and barring regions. I mean, it, it's prevalent across all regions worldwide. So one in 100 ch uh, children is perhaps what explains. So I'll come back to you and try and understand uh, what can parents do to, you know, help early diagnosis? What are the symptoms, the behavioral patterns that can help right. parents take the child to the doctor? That is something that is very important to understand. So that is, some, that is something I'll come back to you and understand. But uh, let me go across to uh, Mr. Rajan in the meanwhile. As someone who's been associated with this cause, Mr. Rajan, for several years, and the, the most important part is every year we are celebrating, we are observing World Autism Awareness Day. In fact, for, uh, for several years now, in several countries, the day is being uh, redefined. So it's not World Autism Awareness Day anymore. There is World Autism Acceptance Day. Over the years, have you seen the world becoming more aware and more sensitive to the needs of those who are autistic? Absolutely, yeah. 
we have we have been existing for the last 15 years and we have been consistently engaging the complete society in the awareness program and uh, right from uh, my child being a two and a half year old boy today he is a 28 year old boy so we have come a, uh, come along a long journey uh, every year we uh, use all the opportunities for us to make the people aware that autism is a really a serious disability at the same time if autism can be uh, handled in the correct perspective by uh, at the right time and right intervention is provided for these children mm -hmm. they they can uh, you can see the kind of uh, potential they can exhibit in some cases there are of course there are two types of uh, autism one is a high functioning and others a low functioning children so both these prospectives have shown a lot of uh, uh, improvements when proper intervention is provided to them so aware, as far as awareness is concerned yes we have uh, consistently engaged the government we have consistently engaged the corporate sectors mm -hmm. we have consistently been with the public for a long time and then today uh, in fact it took almost a lot of time for us to get autism uh, included in the disability act and finally we uh, achieved that also there is a big milestone that we achieved so now people a uh, lot of people are aware uh, about autism and a lot of people are very sensitive about this particular disability and support us in many ways absolutely and that's that's uh, the theme also of the world autism awareness uh, month as well uh, mr sharma let me bring that question to you uh, the three a's that the focus is of world Aut autism awareness month is awareness acceptance and advocacy the goal is to improve the lives of those who are not just autistic but also their families so basically sensitizing uh, their needs and uh, making lives better for them but all of this sounds good when it comes to spreading awareness making people talk about this as a cause but someone who experiences it firsthand as as a parent of an autistic child what are the challenges that you face not just in bringing up your child but in terms of acceptance from society from extended families yeah tina actually the first thing is a uh, very rightly you have said acceptance is the first a and in fact these challenges start from day one since my son was diagnosed with autism we have been facing this issues but i agree with mr rajan that gradually this actually acceptance in the society is growing in the sense ki now people don't look at these kids differently and they are taking very sympathetic and very understanding view for the kids but it is a process that is uh, that is still a long way to achieve and a lot of work needs to be done on that absolutely so a long way to go before we actually can claim to be an inclusive society uh, which celebrates people with differences as well but uh, before i go across to mr nurani and uh, speak uh, about diagnosis uh, what is causing the delay let me come back to you mr rajan and uh, uh, Take a quick opinion on how the pandemic has uh, sort of exacerbated inequalities. To say, all of us know the pandemic was a difficult time uh, for for everyone across the world. But when we talk about people with special needs who need special care, the pandemic has been a very very tough period. So can we say that the last two years has been very very difficult for those who have uh, been who are autistic and also for their families in terms of coping up with the new challenges that we were facing. yeah absolutely and the pandem pandemic was a big challenge to us uh, in the sense that uh, generally these children are used certain to certain routines and during the pandemic when the lock lockdown was declared uh, these children were totally confused and in a confused state their behavior pattern also started changing so one said we, we should handle their behavior patterns a second thing is we should adhere to the lockdown situations and at the same time uh we uh, in autism society of india coordinated a lot of uh, work with the uh, government again in fact i would be very grateful to the government who stepped in very aggressively to support us uh, right from the disability commissioner to the director of disability all we are we are in touch with them and they are also very supportive to us uh, there were uh, occasions where a parent has to transfer uh, sorry travel from one state to another state during that time 
uh, there is a uh, requirement of institutional quarantine. Mm -hmm. In such situations, uh, we requested the disability commissioner because these children will not understand what is institutional quarantine. So uh, they immediately, uh, we, we given them a guarantee that don't worry, these parents will be, we'll take responsibility for the parents to not move out of any particular location. So they were permitted home quarantine immediately without any uh, giving any gap. So this helped us a lot as a parent. Many, many parents were grateful to us because one side we coordinated with the government, other side we are also supporting the parents. And go government also came in very, uh, created various structures uh, in terms of uh, several IAS officers came forward to support us. And there were one or two corporate organizations who also came forward, like Vipro and other organizations came forward to fill in the gap and give us uh, uh, space and area where these children can be kept comfortably. So we had a very, it was a very uh, tough experience for us, but at the same time, uh, we got a good support from the government and also uh, the general uh, corporate sector also came forward to support us with their help. We were able to tide over this situation. So very encouraging not to hear very... that not just awareness has been increasing over the last few years. There is increasing acceptance, as uh, you know, Mr. Sharma was saying, but also that uh, uh, members of civil society, members of the government have been putting efforts to make lives easier for the autistic people. But mm -hmm. the challenge remains in early diagnosis. So let me bring that question back to Dr. Nurani. It's a huge concern. So although we do not know one particular cause mm -hmm. of autism, the, I think the biggest challenge, the biggest hurdle that we have to tide over is early diagnosis. And if you could also help us and our viewers understand what are the behavioral patterns that are visible among children who are autistic for parents, uh, uh, wh when should they know that they need to take their child to the doctor? Right. Uh, it, it actually starts from very early in the age, when, when a child at the age of three to five months of age has to give me a social smile back, isn't it? If a child is missing on any of the early developmental milestones, you said that what is missing? Missing is that a young parent recently married don't know anything majorly, they don't know about the developmental milestones of a child in the first few years of the life because they are, they are so uh, busy in their work and other things are there, new marriage has happened. They are not uh, being given the information about early mild, milestones checklists. That is where a role of a pediatrician comes into play. Whenever or a gynecologist, when uh, a child is born, there should be a checklist or there should be a pamphlet in the hand of a young parent who is given the developmental milestone tracker so that a parent will be able to see that from three to five months of age, if my child is not following objects, if my child is not maintaining eye contact with me, if my child is not giving me social smile, I'm smiling at him or her, he or she is not giving me that social smile back. If the child is not able to respond to different sounds, these are called early red flag signs in a child, which might result in any kind of a developmental delay or a developmental disorder, which can be autism spectrum disorder. In fact, we have seen in our clinical practices at Child Development Clinic that when young parents who are well-informed parents bring their children early, for example, at the age of six months, and they, they raise the concern that my child is not giving me eye contact or my child is not able to pay attention towards my facial gestures, these are the kids who can be picked up early. Even if the diagnosis is done by 18 months of age, we don't need to diagnose a child and wait for the diagnosis of autism spectrum disorder. This is a very, very important thing because most clinicians, many, uh, many parents think that if the diagnosis is not done till three years of age, we can wait and watch. Mm -hmm. That is where we, we miss the golden period of zero to three years of early intervention. And when the brain development of 90% takes place by five years of age, if the red flag signs, not following instructions, not looking at me, not giving me social smile, poor joint attention means if I'm pointing to something, child is not able to look at that and look back at me. There is lack of sharing of joy and excitement. And if he or she is not able to register a caregiver, if there is no uh, separation anxiety, or for example, if they don't have this uh, stranger anxiety, sorry, and uh, these, these kinds of milestones can be tracked 
if any of this is missing we don't Certainly. say that every we, we don't say that every child will be looking at me at 3 months of age and smiling no it can be there is a range from 3 to 5 months there is a range for a child from 10 to 14 months that my child should be able to speak first meaningful word when i say meaningful word it means it's not like pa 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 no it is like only directing or labeling his or her father as papa or mama this is called a meaningful word utterance usually we have these myths uh, that boys speak late so uh, we can wait for it this is absolutely. an absolute myth absolutely i think look, that that's yes. very important in india what we generally see is abhi bachcha hai thoda bada hoga to shayad theek ho jayega mr sharma when is when was the time that you got to know that your child is autistic over the years if you could uh, take us and our viewers through how your experience has been and especially if you talk about the last two years how did you help your child uh, cope up with uh, with the pandemic yeah since actually i am part of the indian navy so my son was born i was posted in bishaka patnam and i agree with dr nurani that the perception in fact the doctors also said ki since he is a boy ki boys take time yes so in that way we were very relaxed okay with time he will recover or maybe he will start picking up things then i was uh, transferred from vishaka patnam to delhi that is uh, when we actually the actual diagnosis uh, happened and we came to know that he is autistic so i fully agree that uh, this general perception it goes on boys take time and girls are very fast it happened in mark in our case also maybe if the intervention had started earlier the things would have been different maybe yes and yes. as you the second question that you were asking last two years have been very very challenging and very difficult because like uh, both my son actually he is in hostel since he is the only child so as per the doctor's advice since he does not have any sibling uh, so he was developing different behaviors after coming back from, from the special school so we had put him in a hostel so during pandemic what has happened myself and my wife presently am posted in mumbai we were stuck in mumbai and he was there in hostel in noida so in fact uh, i could travel because like this permission was there for the navy but my wife couldn't travel and like during the entire lockdown and the period after that we really struggle and he was so emotionally drained and so emotionally low that he lost almost 8 kg of weight so it was very challenging and actually how how to put it across certainly I, I, i completely understand it's been a very challenging time but fortunately uh, i mean we've left behind the times of the pandemic hopefully we are returning towards normalcy and things should get better from here but uh, uh, mr rajan coming back to you to understand when we talk about inclusivity it's it sounds very good but in a system wherein you know we are driven by perceptions as dr nurani and mr sharma both pointed out in fact i am mother to a boy and i mean he started speaking quite early in the age within the first year he started speaking so people would uh, you know look at me in surprise and say oh very rare for boys to actually you know begin talking and walking uh, so early in the age because boys take their own sweet time so that is something that i have also been used to hearing and very rightly said this is a perception which goes around uh, driving our society but when we talk about inclusivity do you think in our society where you know we are driven by such perceptions inclusive inclusivity especially education institutionals it's easier to say than do it actually uh, regarding this subject matter we are till way behind uh, in in making the institutional accept you know inclusivity mm -hmm. uh, in fact we are uh, uh, this this year we have an agenda to uh, work towards inclusivity in more aggressive manner uh, by engaging lot of schools and other areas to make them understand that inclusivity helps these children and in inclusivity we have uh, uh, regular children in fact regular children will become more sensitive to the environment by having a child with disability in the same campus so this will help inclusivity also uh, if you see uh, uh, as per rci uh, rehabilitation council of india uh, we have specific uh, kind of educational structure given by government and certificates are given only thing that is uh, really missing with them is uh, we need a kind of recognition 
to some people because we need a lot of caregivers to take care of such children uh, we don't need any basic uh, stringent qualification for the rca to give a certification we are requesting them to be a little lenient in giving some recognized if not a diploma or some other recognition for caregivers who are lesser educated because they are the one who really come forward to and we we can afford them for many many schools for caregivers so this is the one point that is missing with the rci which we are working with them to make them understand that we need uh, to literally uh, slightly modify the education system the training structures given by rci so that more and more caregivers can be brought into the mainstream and our children will be helped a lot with with government recognized uh, kind of a training structure and proper uh, kind of a, what do you call it uh, salary structure and all those kind of things that will help yes lot of schools and parents like us because end of the day if you see uh, we cannot create a, a permanent rehabilitation home for all the children their own home is their permanent home yes so if you have proper caregiver structure in place definitely it's going to help the parents immediately that's right mr sharma so you know mainstream is the key word here and when we talk about inclusivity this is something that we have to take care of in the times to come to ensure that we do not leave anyone behind that's the larger goal of achieving the sustainable development goal by 2030 of course there's been a little setback uh, because of the pandemic but what is the kind of support that one would require when we talk about uh, you know uh, strengthening our caregiving mechanism both uh, in terms of home care also institutional mechanisms that can be uh, set in place what is the kind of support that the government is providing at the moment or you expect in the times to come more kind of such efforts that are required what i believe is that uh, see we have been doing interventions for long as i see uh, two parents here uh, struggling in uh, this pandemic times of two and a half years thankfully we came up with the plan of uh, doing dedicated parent training modules wherein we could connect to all of our parents who are doing therapies with us and we started imparting direct education and caregiver training so that they are not dependent on the therapists for training and skill skill based interventions one thing which is very very important is that a parent has to understand that it is ultimately a parent who is going to take that child through this journey of autism for that they need to learn and they need to upgrade themselves with the skills of behavior modifications a little bit of uh, special education teaching i know it's a psychological burden already on a parent and if you ask them that now you have to do the interventions it adds on to the burden but trust me that if you get over with these difficulties it's not uh, something which a parent cannot do parent training should be the utmost important thing in autism interventions second the caregivers should be given access in schools for example in delhi the delhi government is taking uh, it very very seriously they are trying to get a special educator in the classrooms they are in the schools they are getting counselors ready for the same this is helping in a manner wherein a parent is not called on by every other teacher and being complained about their child there is a particular dedicated person who they uh, raise their uh, concerns and they are communicating with the parent who are sensitized enough for the same inclusion in a real sense is when there is an open door policy for all our children with autism spectrum disorder they are being given individual attentions in the schools and classrooms and are being made to sit with the rest of the 40 children in the classroom for half hour or half an hour two hours or three hours as per the level of the uh, autism spectrum disorder having said that the last thing which i'll add here is that what should be done for enhancing the outcomes of these children is a multidisciplinary approach because most of the times a parent doesn't know why they have to go for the interventions yes. who is the right doctor because they will be visiting a neurologist separately they will be visiting a psychiatrist separately a developmental pediatrician separately please understand it is the work of a unit together let me in the meanwhile get in uh, dr rajan you wanted to make a point on what should be done uh, dr nurani pointed out about how a multidisciplinary approach is required to enhance the outcomes of those uh, you know uh, uh, who who have autism what is your take how do you look at the future Yeah, as, I, as i told you the fundamental thing that is uh, need of the hour is uh, for the rca to bring in they have got a good structured education program but we need a uh, little low end caregivers into the stream 
and these low end caregivers should be recognized by the government with certain certification process that will help us to bring in more and more caregivers into the stream because we need more caregivers uh, in fact uh, from practical point of view uh, it is the husband and wife uh, the the burden is always on the husband and wife they are they are always burdened with the question that uh, after us what next that one one question always lingers yes. with the parents every time yes. at the same time if you see we have come come across uh, one or two cases where uh, in such situation the husband and wife should stay together but unfortunately we found on on one case the husband just abandoning the family and leaving the wife alone to manage the child in another case we found the wife committed a suicide and the husband is alone so we are facing such kind of a uh, severe challenging situation and we are of course we are closely working with a lot of special schools uh, around us in bangalore and across the country also we are in touch with uh, all the organization that is associated with autism to find out what are the practical difficulties they are facing and how we can bring in but the need of the hour is we need more and more low end caregivers to come into the stream uh, with proper recognition or certificate from the government absolutely so, so that, that parents know, they, do they, not have to keep thinking about what happens to our child after us uh, uh, mr sharma absolutely. one last comment from you on what is the kind of change that you would want to see so that living with autism is not a bane not just for the child who is suffering but also for the families what is the kind of change that you would witness so that we ensure that we achieve the goal of leaving no one behind in the right sense Actually, I just like to take that point forward. What Mr. Rajan was saying, actually, because from inclusion comes acceptance, and the point here is like I have seen nowadays in normal schools also it is mandatory to get uh, to and that intake of special kids. Now from that, even the kids, the awareness is increasing, and kids are teaching their parents, yes, mama, papa, ki I have a similar kind of kid in my school. So that acceptance is coming from inclusivity, and I also agree with Dr. Nurani. that parents should not be running from pillar to post we need to have a setup which is a very comprehensive and all the specialists are available at one place that's right ultimately that in the long run will be actually very beneficial and because as such dr nurani is already saying parents are burdened psychologically when when we have such an autistic kid so whatever relief can be provided in any form maybe it is acceptance inclusion or a comprehensive setup everything will be a very positive step in the right direction certainly very important so you know what we've spoken about that even though there is awareness increased awareness and increased acceptance in society for those who are autistic it's a long way ahead to actually uh, claim that we are a society that celebrates differences of all kinds uh, dr sharma has put forth the kind of concerns the challenges which parents keep facing and dr rajan has rightly pointed out how we need to evolve as a society so the kind of changes that we need to think about as a whole and uh, dr nurani has taken us through uh, how it's a multidisciplinary approach that's required so the parents should not be running from pillar to post as it is they are psychologically burdened uh, because of the challenges that they fee face each day in raising an autistic child so things should be much simpler for them they should be provided all kinds of support and all our efforts should be as a society in ensuring that life is very simple and easy for those who are autistic as well as for their families so we hope one day we will be able to uh, achieve this very goal and have a uh, truly inclusive society with that i'll have to wrap up the discussion today thank you gentlemen for joining us on the program on sunset tv and sharing your thoughts your perspectives with us on the world autism awareness month so that's it from us on this edition of perspective today thanks very much to all our viewers as well for their time see you again next week thanks very much